Hello Year 8. Today we're starting our topic on Pythagoras' theorem. Now Pythagoras was a philosopher in ancient Greece who lived in the 6th century BC. He studied astronomy, mathematics, music and religion, but he is most well known for his famous theorem. The ancient Babylonians a thousand years before Pythagoras' time and the Egyptians also knew that there was a relationship between the sides of a right angled triangle. Pythagoras, however, was able to clearly explain and prove the theorem using mathematical symbols. So Pythagoras' theorem only works on right angled triangles. These are triangles that have a 90 degree angle and usually shown a right angle sign. The longest side on a right angled triangle is called the hypotenuse. The other two sides are sometimes called the legs and we're going to name these two sides A and B. So before we learn Pythagoras' theorem, we're just going to practice labeling the sides of a triangle. So the longest side, which is called the hypotenuse, we're going to call that the letter H. And the two shorter sides are going to be A and B. So whenever you see a triangle, you always look for the right angle first. The Sides on either side of the right angle are going to be the two arms. They're going to be A and B. It doesn't actually matter which one is which, A and B. The one straight across from the right angle is always the longer side, which is called the hypotenuse. So let's try that again for question two. So the right angle is here. So the sides on either side we call A and B. And the one straight across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. Question three, the right angle is here, so A and B are the two short sides, and the hypotenuse is across from the right angle. And one more, the right angle is here, A and B are the arms, and the hypotenuse is straight across from the right angle. Okay, so next up we're going to do a little activity on discovering Pythagoras' theorem. So using a ruler, it says here, step one, use a ruler to measure the sides of the following right angle triangle. So if you have a ruler with your booklet, now my ruler doesn't have measurements on it, but you can use the grid to help you count. So you count one, two, three, four spaces for that green square there. So the side of that green square is four centimeters. Now that would mean that that square there would have an area of 4 times 4 which is 16 centimeters squared for the area of that square. Let's also look at this orange one over here. If we count the squares 1, 2, 3, the side length is 3 centimeters which means the area of the square is 3 times 3 which is 9 centimeters squared. Finally, for the hypotenuse, the longer side, you'll need to use your ruler for this one, but that side should measure to be five centimeters long. And five times five for the area of the square is 25 centimeters squared. Now, the interesting thing about all of this is if you have a look what happens when I add those squares together. If I add the two smaller squares, nine, plus 16. So 9 plus 16 actually equals 25, which was the area of our big square. So that is basically saying my shorter side, A squared, and my other shorter side, B squared, is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And that there is Pythagoras' theorem. That was the rule that he came up with. So on the next page, we've got Homer here being very smart because he knows Pythagoras' theorem. And here is the rule written down for you. If this is our right angle triangle with the arms A and B, H being the hypotenuse, Pythagoras' theorem is the hypotenuse squared equals A squared plus B squared. Now, because rearranging formulas isn't the easiest thing for everybody to do, 
I'm actually going to rearrange the formula for you to get the H by itself. So there's going to be two formulas that we're going to learn for this topic. So this is the first one. If you want to find the length of the hypotenuse, this is the formula here that we're going to use. H equals big square root sine of A squared plus B squared. So all I've done is to get rid of the squared that was on top of that H there, I've square rooted the other side. So to use the formula in all of these examples down here, we're finding the hypotenuse. Okay, so all we need to do is work out what A and B is. Now, if the right angle is here, A and B are these two shorter sides. Now I'd like you to practice writing the formula down so that you can memorize it. So there's our formula. And all I have to do is substitute in that A is equal to six. So I have a big square root sign, six squared plus, and then the other side is eight, so eight squared. From that line there, you'll need to grab your calculator and you need to type in that big square root sign. So square root six squared plus eight squared and equals. And so that equals 10. Now, because this is the length of a side, we need to remember units. So because these two sides are in centimeters, my hypotenuse is going to be 10 centimeters. Okay, let's try that again. So the first thing is we need to use the same formula. We write the formula down. H equals square root of A squared plus B squared. Now I'm going to call the A the 9 and the B the 12. Let's substitute those in. So H equals big square root. A is 9, so 9 squared plus B, which is 12 squared equals. Okay, now we're back to the calculator. We type of the square root sign, 9 squared plus 12 squared equals, equals 15. And this time the units are in meters, so 15 meters. And one more. To find the hypotenuse, first of all write the formula down. Okay, now for this question I'm going to call the A the 2.5 and the B the 6. So in the formula, that will be H equals big square root 2.5 squared plus the B, which is 6 squared. And in the calculator, oops, square root 2.5 squared plus 6 squared. Okay, so that equals 6.5. And the units are millimeters. So in some of your questions, you may have to round your answers to two decimal places. Okay, that's it.